Hello YouTube. Now, let's say you have a song or you know soundtrack of some kind and you wanted to cut it down. It might not sound like something you would do a lot, but in fact, there are quite a few uses for that. Maybe you're making a video, which you know is something that everyone will get to do at one point of time or another. You want to use this track as your soundtrack, but you decide that it's too long. Well, you have a need to cut it down. Maybe you have a song you really like and you want to use it as a ringtone. Well, you probably want to cut it down as well. Today, we're going to explore doing just that. More on this after the break. This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. Hello and welcome to yet another Random Wednesday episode. Today, we're going to take a look at actually shortening a piece of music and to do that, we're going to use a program called Audacity. If you're brand new to editing music and you're looking for a piece of software to, well, basically help you with that, I highly recommend Audacity. It's free, it's open source, and more importantly, it's extremely powerful. So, well, you can head down to the video description or copy this link on screen, audacity.sourceforge.net, pop over and download the latest version. Now, for a tutorial like this, I would of course have to actually show you me cutting down some music. What with all the copyright concerns on YouTube and stuff like that, it's very hard to find good legal music to actually put in my videos, which is why today I want to give a huge shout out to Incompetech.com. Essentially, this site is a repository run by one man with hundreds of songs across a multitude of genres. All its music is licensed under the Creative Commons license, which means you don't have to worry about, you know, any copyright issues arising out of that. All you have to do is to actually give him credit, and that's it. So yeah, if you're ever in need of some kind of soundtrack, and you want to be mindful of copyright issues, do look towards Incompetech.com. Today I've taken three tracks off his library for use in this tutorial. But okay, enough preamble, let's actually jump in to taking a look at some of the techniques that, well, goes into making this work. On the surface, the act of shortening a piece of music is actually extremely simple. You simply cut at two places, delete a chunk of the music, and shift everything back together. But you realize you cannot do this at an arbitrary point within the song. You're gonna have to cut somewhere strategic, otherwise your cut will be obvious. You'll be able to hear a skip in the audio, and nobody wants that. The key behind what we're doing in today's tutorial is we want to make this seamless. So we're going to start by learning how to make a good cut. The entire method I'm sharing with you today involves making a cut at a drum beat. In a typical song, well, your drum beats tend to be pretty loud, and you can actually see them visually as these little spikes in the audio. Of course, they aren't always this visible, I mean, for example, if you're dealing with a rock track, what's going to happen is everything is going to be extremely loud, and you might not be able to distinguish the actual beats. You might actually have to count the beats, actually know the rhythm and follow along. So yeah, it might be a little bit more challenging. So okay, let's say now you've found your drum beat, you know exactly where you want to make your cut. Click on the selection tool. Now, we're going to zoom in to the area where we want to make our cut. So hold down the control button, and actually scroll your mouse wheel up. This is a shortcut that works in a lot of apps, by the way, holding down control and scrolling is actually a zoom action. Now what you want to do is you want to click near the high point of the beat. Don't worry if it's a little bit off, you can use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard to actually shift your selection. How do you check if your selection is placed well? Well, just press space. Space will actually play the track, and what you want to hear is you want to hear the entirety of that beat and you want that beat to start immediately when you press space. These two conditions are there to check that you didn't go too far forwards because if you did go too far forwards, you won't hear the entire beat. And if you move too far backwards, you'll hear a little bit of a delay before the beat actually kicks in. We want neither of these things to happen, so position your cursor right before the beat. By the way, in case you've lost your beat somehow, hold down the shift button on your keyboard and scroll with your mouse wheel. That will actually scroll the entire track left and right. Anyway, once you're done making a selection, what you want to do is you want to zoom out. Hold down shift on your keyboard and actually click 
towards the end of the song. Now go to Edit, Clip Boundaries, Split New. What this means is you're actually going to take that track and split it into a track of its own. Now just to quickly explain to you what stacking means in Audacity, if you have two tracks stacked on top of each other and you play it through, what's going to happen is it's going to mix the two signals together so you hear both those sounds. In this particular case, there is no mixing because the second track starts when the first track ends and at that precise moment. So they don't overlap and as such, you don't hear any mixing. So okay, we've made our first cut. What we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to make our second cut somewhere, remove one chunk of audio, put everything back together before we get our shortened track. Today, I'm going to share with you three techniques on where to make your second cut. In other words, how much and what you want to remove. The first method we're going to look at is the simplest of the three. And essentially what we're doing is we are actually exploiting repetition in a piece of music. Your typical song has a structure like this. Notice two repetitions of verse and chorus. The simplest cut that can be made to shorten a song will be to drop one of these repetitions. So let us look at our sample track. This one is called I Feel You from the Incompetech library. And essentially you can see a very clear repetition that is, well, a copy here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my first cut around the start of the first repetition. I'm going to split it out to a new track. Then I'm actually going to repeat the exact same process for the start of the second repetition. I'm just going to go find a beat, make a cut, split that to a new track. All I have to do now is I have to delete the first repetition by clicking on the little X. Then I click on the time shift tool and I just shift the second portion all the way until it snaps to the first one. You don't have to worry about lining it up very well because, well, Audacity helps you snap it in place. If you've made your cuts precisely using the method I showed you earlier on, you should be able to play back your cut and not hear any seam. Basically, if you can do that, you've achieved what you are supposed to achieve. If you actually hear a little skip, you might have to undo and just examine your cuts to make sure that you didn't cut too much or too little. Always remember that we are cutting exactly when the beat happens. So that's all well and good. That is all there is for that particular method. By the way, if you're happy with what you're hearing, you want to go to File, Export to actually save this to an audio file that you can play anywhere. But let's say you want to do something even more precise than that. Let's say you want to really jump in and cut everything up to your heart's content, you're going to have to do something a little bit more complicated. And this is where some understanding of how music works really helps. I'm no expert at music, but I'll try to make this as easy to understand as possible. A song is basically made up of a bunch of beats. These beats follow a certain pattern. For most songs, beats belong together in groups of four. These groups are called bars. Here's an audio representation of what that might sound like. Depending on the time signature of a song, you may have more or less beats in a bar, though that is less common. Bars also come together to form groups called phrases. Each phrase groups together a set of bars that are musically similar. This means that when you hear changes in a song, say the beat or the melody changes, this means you've moved from one phrase to another. So this next strategy involves identifying and working with the individual phrases. In particular, you can actually segregate your song into their phrases, you can drop certain phrases or rearrange them around. Watch this demonstration, it should give you some hints as to how this approach works. First, I count the bars. Note where the melody of the song changes. This tells us that the first phrase was 4 bars long. Typically, you expect the phrase length to stay the same throughout a song, and we can make use of this to help us in identifying the phrases. I separate the first two phrases. I repeat the same process several times over, isolating the first few phrases as well as the last. This allows me to reconstruct the entire track. I shift the third phrase to replace the second. I use the solo feature to mute all tracks except the tracks with solo active. All that's left to do now is to reassemble the phrases in whatever way you like. 
Eventually, I keep only 4 of the phrases in the entire song. Generally, it is a good idea to keep the first and the last phrase, just to get a nice intro and outro to the track. Playing everything back, it still sounds quite normal, and the reason for that is because, well, I preserved the structure. I didn't break the pattern of bars and phrases. Obviously, if you want to actually look deeper into this, you might be worried about things like key changes and things like that. Personally, if you ask me, the strategy would be to play by ear. If it sounds normal, it's probably okay. So now we move on to our last and most complicated method, which actually is based on everything we've seen so far. Instead of keeping the phrases intact, what we're going to do is we are actually going to do something that looks like this. We're going to remove certain bars from a track. As you can see, I've shortened each phrase from 4 bars in length down to 2. Notice how I'm removing the middle bars to achieve this effect. Keeping the first and last bars around is important, since these are the bits that will help you transition from one phrase to the next. Anyway, here's a demonstration. This is a track called There It Is. The previous two methods we've seen might not be practical for a track this short, seeing as that, well, those methods tend to remove a lot at one go. However, if you don't have a lot to work with in the first place, removing a lot would not be practical. Which is why this method is particularly useful if you want to make just small changes, you know, just little micro things. So yeah, definitely very useful. Let's take a look at how I do this. As you can hear, this song is kind of like one of those game show intros. And for the entirety of the first phrase, we have a little bit of a build up. And only when the second phrase actually begins, does well, the whole track come out in its full glory. So let's say I don't want so much build up. I want it to just do a quick intro and get into the track right away. What I'm going to do now is for this first phrase, I'm going to keep the first bar, remove the second and the third bars, and then keep the fourth bar. So as you watch me try to make the cut at the fourth bar, here's a tip to save you a little bit of time. You don't necessarily have to split things out to a new track. What I'm doing here is, I'm holding down shift and making a selection to the left instead. Be sure the selection snaps to the end of the previous track. Then hit delete on your keyboard. This removes the second and third bars and joins everything back together in one step. So okay, that's done, everything split, everything joined back. Listening to this, it still sounds great because you still get the introduction from the first bar and then the conclusion in the fourth bar, with a very smooth transition into the second phrase. So alright, these are your three techniques. Just to very quickly summarize, the idea is you want to make a cut before a beat. The part you remove has to be significant in terms of the entire rhythm, in terms of the entire pattern of the song. For example, you can remove half the song, if the whole thing has a very clear repeated pattern. If you want to go into the nitty gritty, you're going to have to take a look at bars and phrases. The quicker way to approach this will be to break down a song by phrases and removing whichever phrases you don't like. If you want to jump further in, you can actually reconstruct your own phrases by selectively removing bars in the middle of these phrases. You don't necessarily have to remove them from the middle, but I find that the best way because, well, it keeps the transitions between the neighboring phrases dead and it just gives you a higher chance of getting things to flow nicely. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode. I'm sorry it ran a little bit long, and I hope it was not too confusing. If you have any questions about this, or if you'd like to share your experience, please do leave a comment below. I love reading your comments, and I will do my best to reply to all of them. Anyway, that is pretty much it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. You're watching 0612 TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.